Alright guys, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to be looking at something, um, again, something a lot of people have requested recently, is uh, if you've been following along, I guess, with like uh, my various sort of platform stuff, you probably now are at the point where you kind of comfortably have something, gameplay-wise, that looks something like this. Uh, you can move around, you can jump and all that kind of stuff, and your character will change to face the correct direction. But um, a lot of people have been wondering how to make your character animate in terms of like the you know walking along or you know doing like a little jump animation or whatever. Um, so I'm just going to cover that very quickly today and just sort of you know how I've set it up. Um, in terms of how I made animations for my characters, um, what I do is I use a combination of um, well actually for this character here I think the only thing I used was Flash. Um, that's a totally different package of software entirely, like, um, like I've said in one of my really early videos, I, you know, I, I know a lot of stuff beyond just Game Maker that I use to, um, to put together my games. Um, Flash is one of them, um, I use that to do, uh, like, um, characters and character animations just because I find it, that's just, I just find that the easiest tool to work with. Um, any number of different tools you might use, but, um, I can show you if I close this. The um, the animation frames for this character. If I just go to like Hero Idle here and edit sprite, you can see um, this idle animation. It is actually an animation. Um, show preview. It's really really subtle, and um, it's really a waste of all these billions of frames. It's something I did years and years and years ago. Well, three years ago I guess or something like that. For um, <laughs> yeah, that's like 70 frames long. The guy just started very subtly bobbing his head. I could have probably done this in like seven frames if I wanted to, and just like really massively reduced the uh, the frame rate it was played at. But um, back then I was always like, no, everything has to be 60 FPS and be really smooth and and play at 60 FPS and so on and so forth. And that was a bit stupid. So um, yeah, that does have an animation. You can see he is bobbing his head down, up and down ever so slightly. And that's my idle animation. So at the moment, um, I took out all the animation code, so he will just sit and play that when I'm in the game, as you saw a second ago. So um, also, though, I have here run animation. You can see there he is running, showing the preview at 60 FPS. Um, bunch of frames in there. That's just him running. Um, as you can see, I only have um, him facing to the right because you know I'm using image X scale just to flip him left and right. Um, same with the idle animation, like I don't have a version of this animation that's facing to the left because I can just flip the X scale and it's the same thing, but you know, flip to the left. So I have that, and then for jumping and falling, um, I actually just use single frames for this a lot of the time, um, because it saves you, otherwise you've got to write in code to deal with sort of going from the transition of jumping, of you know, being on the floor to jumping, which you know, I can do, but um, a lot of the times for simplicity's sake, um, especially if I'm trying to do something quickly, I'll just, you know, have one frame. And so when I'm in the air moving upwards, I'll use this frame, where he's, you know, he's just rising upwards. And, um, the same for falling. When I'm falling, I use this frame. Just as so he's falling. So, how I've got that set up, um... Normally, um, what I would do is, in the code, I would probably look for the areas that change my character state, like if I'm holding to the right then I'll start that animation or whatever, but in this case what I've done just so I can demonstrate it as well, um, and it's not entirely an invalid way to do it, is I've separated out, if I skip all the, down all this code, this bit I've commented out at the bottom here just to, so we can, I can show you the effect it all has at the end compared to, you know, with no animation code, is I've just separated out the animation code into a separate sort of series of checks that just checks what kind of sta state our player is in and then we'll just set his sprite to be the thing it needs to be based on you know whether or not he's moving whether or not he's in the air and so on and so forth so here if I just if I uncomment this out now yeah, what I have here is first of all I'm checking if grounded you'll remember if you've watched my in-depth the platformer tutorial um, grounded is a variable I use, um, and I've done a check for earlier somewhere or other in the code to see if there is um, a floor below me, then set grounded to false, otherwise, uh, no, set grounded to true, otherwise set grounded to false. So whenever I'm in the air, um, grounded is false. Uh, but So this is saying if grounded is true, so if I'm on the floor, 
then uh, basically my animation has to either be the idle animation or the run animation. So we've just got to say which one of the two it is. Um, if our horizontal speed uh, is currently zero, hsper, hsper, which is, as you know from that previous tutorial, if you haven't watched that already, go and do so because it's kind of relevant to this one. <laughs> um, well, actually, it's not that important, I guess. If you're just here to learn how to change your animation, then you'll learn that regardless. But for the sake of the platforming stuff, um, Huspa is the variable I use to contain my character's horizontal speed. So if that is zero, um, then that means we're stood still on the floor. That's that's what we've got. That's what we've concluded from those two if statements. Therefore, all I need to do here is say um, set my sprites current. Uh, set my sprite to be my hero, uh, hero underscore idle sprite, which is the one where he's just bobbing his head up and down. We do that just by assigning sprite underscore index to be the name of one of our sprites over here. Simple as that. Sprite index equals hero idle, semicolon. Uh, okay, so that's, you know, if we're on the floor and we're not moving, set the idle animation. So then, how do we change that to running if we're running? Well, if our horizontal speed isn't zero and we're on the floor, then we're obviously moving. So, then, we need to do something a little bit different, though. We need to say, if our sprite index is not currently um, hero run, so that will then check to see if we're already in uh, the hero run animation, um, because if we're not, then we want to set our image index to zero. Your image in your sprite index is what sprite your object currently is using, and your image index is the frame of that animation. So uh, zero is obviously the the very very first frame of the animation. So if I go to hero run right now, uh, if I just close this hero run. So as you can see here, image zero through to image twenty seven, um, the index your image underscore index will always be whichever. Uh, frame of animation you're currently on and that doesn't change just by changing what sprite you're on so if I'm on the hero idle and I'm animating and say uh, I'm on like the 15th frame of my idle animation and uh, I tell my sprite index to be hero run um, my image index doesn't actually change from 15 so it'll go to run and it'll put me on image 15 of run because that's my image index um, that means I'll be starting halfway through the run animation. Whereas, like, if I, you know, have a build up to my run or something like that, typically I'm going to want to start from the beginning of the animation, um, just so it looks a bit more in sync and you don't snap to sort of halfway through animations and stuff. So that's the whole point of that that line of code down there um, of this one. So basically, if we're not already if we're not already in our running animation, then set our image index to be zero. Um, so it sets our sets our current frame back to the start, and then just set sprite index um, to be equal to hero run. I haven't put a semicolon there; doesn't matter though. But good practice. Um, the only reason I don't do that um, is help here is because though most of my hero idle frames are the same anyway, so it, it doesn't really matter what frame of idle I set myself to when when I'm no longer moving. But yeah, I just do that just to make sure I start from the beginning. Of that every time, and then if um, if I'm already running, then uh, it won't do this. So like it's not going to permanently set me to image index zero because then I would never get past the first frame. So yeah, that's uh, that's all the animation stuff for if we're on the floor, and then we just want to see if we're in the air else. So and that that else is linked to this this top if statement up here, as you can see from the indenting. So I've, I've kept it separate so you can easily see. If you highlight one of these squiggly brackets, by the way, something I've not pointed out before, it'll show you the squiggly bracket that it's linked to. Um, <laughs> I keep calling them squiggly brackets. I don't know what the proper name for them is. Someone let me know. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me what the squiggly brackets are supposed to be called. Uh, <laughs> but as you can see, if you highlight one of them, it'll turn blue along with the other one um, to, sh to show you which one it's connected to. And that can help you sometimes if you have one too many of these. Um, like if you've accidentally done something. Like um, like this or something like you can start to see oh right and when work out which one and that'll like, turn red if it doesn't have one it's paired with and you can work out um, how to keep those paired properly so else over here so if our grounded isn't true so that means if we're in the air um, then we need either the jumping animation or the falling animation this one's a lot easier because like we don't have to do any of this because they're just a single frame. 
So all we're going to do is say if our vertical speed, uh, the spur from before, is less than zero, so it's negative, so we're moving upwards, um, set sprite underscore index to be hero jumping, which as we saw is this little guy, so he's moving up like that, hero jumping. And then basically you can pretty much guess how it works from there, we just say else, so if uh, our v-speed is not less than zero, so it's either zero or above zero, so meaning we're either still in the air or we're moving down in the air, um, set our sprite index to hero fall, and then that shuts off falling animation, so then, I've, I mean I've only just uncommented that out, but you saw there was no animation before, so just to prove that that, that works as I have described it. Yep, there we go. Uh, there's my run animation, so whenever I'm still and on the floor, it's going to set me to my idle animation, and then whenever I'm moving on the floor, if I wasn't moving already, set myself to the very start of my animation, so my image index is zero, and then set my sprite index to be... Um, sprite index to be the hero run animation. What you can do um, if you you know if you have an animation that doesn't quite fit with your frame rate or something, so say um, like you know um, like I didn't know about this when I was doing it before, so um, in my idle animation that's why I have all these million frames so that I um, I, I was syncing up so that it was the speed of animation I wanted. I was syncing that up to the frame rate of my game, so I was like, oh, okay, I want like a second of animation, so it needs to be like sixty frames long don't need to do that because what you can do is you can use a property called um, image speed um, to basically affect the the speed of animation so if I would say wanted this to be um, say actually I'll do it with well I need to do it in all of them really I say image underscore speed equals one um, what that means is that will move at exactly our frame rate um, hundred percent of our frame rate so 60 It'll, it'll play back that sprite index at 60 FPS. Every single frame, it'll take over by um, another frame, basically. So that that's how many frames we move per frame, <laughs> if you get it. So if we wanted our run animation to be like twice as fast or something, we wanted to play it, um, um, well, no, actually, that's unlikely we would want that. Say we wanted it to be half as fast, so we only wanted it to change, um, we wanted to play a new frame every two frames. We could say image underscore speed equals 0.5, and then basically we're increasing by half a frame every frame. And obviously our frames not actually animations not actually going to change until we increase by a full frame. So two frames of the game later, we increase by one frame of animation because of 0.5. Um, jumping and fall there, yeah. They're single frame, so I don't need to do anything with their speeds. But as we can see now, what should happen is we should run at pretty much half the animation speed. Yeah, as you can see, it's a much slower now. Run animation speed. So you can use that to control the playback speed of your animation, as opposed to um, doing what I used to do years ago and just setting <laughs> and just you know accounting for that with uh, the number of frames in your animation because that will consume lots and lots and lots of memory if you have a high frame rate in your game. As you can see this guy alone is one megabyte. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> um, especially when like I could just you know I could just pretty much delete half of these frames and get the exact same effect. Like I could just like delete every other frame. Animation would look basically exactly the same. Um, so yeah that's how you change that's how you change animation, that's how you set the uh, speed of an anim animation, that's how you set what frame of an animation you're currently on. And those properties can be checked with if statements, so you can say if your sprite index is something, if your image index is, if, you've, if, you know, if you're on a particular frame of animation, do this. You can say um, if your speed is currently such and such, you can set your speed to different things. And yeah, you can do a lot of different stuff just by using things like if statements and, um, and these... Uh, three different variables. They're the most important ones really when you're working with animation. Sprite index, image index, and image speed. Yep, so that's that for this tutorial. Um, I'll catch you guys next week.